Welcome to episode three of Imagine, Capture, Inspire. And on this episode, I'm taking you to Ningaloo Reef in Western Australia to swim with the whale sharks and talk about the camera gear and settings that I use. Alright, first things first, let's talk about my camera gear. Now, for most of the footage you're about to see, I actually shot this on the GoPro Hero 4. Now, this just sits on top of my Aquatech Elite housing like so. So, I connect that in, you screw it in, and that sits on top. Right, now the Aquatech Elite 2, I'm using the PD85 8 inch dome port with a P70 EEX extension ring and it's a Canon 5D Mark IV uh, water housing with a Canon 16-35 f4 IS lens. And that's the water housing I use. Now I'm mainly a stills photographer, so that's why I use the GoPro on top. And my Canon 5D Mark IV is what I use to take those shots. Now with the Aquatech system, it's quite good. It gives you most of the controls on the back here. And the main controls that you're looking for are a manual shutter, uh, so all manual settings, so shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. Now, when I'm swimming with the whale sharks or swimming with wildlife, my uh, I'm always trying to look through the viewfinder as much as I can. Uh, sometimes I'll have it out in front of me I'm shooting, and because I'm shooting at 16 millimeters, it allows me a pretty good idea to get what I see in front of me in shot but for that little bit extra uh, compositional, looking through the viewfinder always helps a lot more. Now the great thing about the Canon system is the, uh, the gears and the lens gears. So because I'm shooting with 16 to 35 millimeters, this actually allows me to zoom in a little bit. More often than not, I am shooting at 16 mil, but with this zoom gear, I'll sometimes zoom in to 20 to 24 millimeter depending on the clarity of the water and a few other things like that. Now the reason why we use such wide angle lenses, especially for this surface photography, is to make sure that uh, we are as, as close to the subject as possible. So the closer you are to the subject, there's less chance of debris and backscatter to come in front of you. Now that's important to make sure that you get the, uh, the best quality image as possible and also being closer means there's less red light being filtered out of the water. So that's why we use a, those wide angle rectilinear lenses. Now a couple other tools that I use before I get into the settings are this specialty tool here. This is a toothbrush and I just keep this in the tool bag to help get any debris away from the, uh, the o-ring or even the threads at the front here. And I'd simply just go through, make sure you're swiping away like that, getting anything. Maybe, uh, maybe if you've got pets, you might have some pet hair in there, and that just stops it from getting in the way and making sure you get a good seal. The other piece would be this lens pen. Now, this is very similar. It's got a polishing section and also the brush here. Now the brush is a little bit softer than this so you could use it on the inside of the port if you needed or anything else on the housing. Now, whoops, this way here. The last piece would be this hand air blower. So this is what I'd use to clean out the, uh, the port from the inside, clear out any sand or debris. Then I would be using the, um, the polishing knob on this. Now make sure you don't use the polishing knob unless you've got all the sand out of the, the port. But simply be going in if it's all disconnected and doing this, clearing it all out, 
trying to dislodge any debris. In regards to my camera settings, so for these shots I was on, um, I think it was ISO 400, aperture of 6.3 and a shutter speed of um, 640th of a second. Now the reason why I'm at those settings is my main focus is being, um, I've got a moving subject, I'm moving so I want to make sure I can freeze the subject and not have a blurry subject. Now to do that, 640th of a second, there's no rule of thumb as to matching that speed. It's simply uh, by experience and going, okay, these guys, we're moving this fast or this slow, what's the least or most um, quick of shutter speed I need to make sure I can freeze my subject. Uh, then following on from that, I want to make sure my su subject has as much depth of field or as much as I need to be in focus. So that's why I'm at aperture of 6.3. And because I am underwater, it's usually one to two stops um, darker in exposure than above the surface. So you've got to balance that out a bit and then use your ISO, for, uh, ISO rating to make sure you get the right exposure. So ISO 400, I always try to use the lowest ISO rating that I can based on the other settings that I have. So I, I don't have any problem going all the way up to 1600. Um, it just means there might be a little bit more noise, but with some noise reduction software, it will still look pretty good. Now, it depends on what you're shooting as well, or what you're shooting for. If you're shooting for prints, um, you know, some people might go all the way up to 4000 ISO. Some people might only want to use ISO 100, but make sure you know where these photos are going. If it's going just on Instagram, um, you know, people aren't going to be able to tell, but if you're printing them big, you certainly want to use that lower ISO rating unless there's an aesthetic that you're looking for. The other settings that you'd need to know are the focus, um, focus mode settings. So I was using the AI servo mode. Now this just allows me to continuously track the subject. So uh, in other systems, I think it's called the continuous focus mode. And this is because we, I'm moving pretty fast, the subject's moving fast. You wanna make sure you can um, quickly gauge that the, the movement and make sure it focuses quite quick. The other thing it's worth noting is depending on your lens, uh, some lenses aren't as quick at grabbing focus as others. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the 16 to 35 millimeter lens. It certainly grabs focus very quickly. But if you had something like the, um, the older model 85 millimeter 1.2, even though it's not a wide angle lens, it's a bit slower in focusing. Um, and when I'm shooting action, I wanna have something that's quite quick at get grabbing that focus. Um, making sure you use that high frame rate um, shutter drive. So I put it on high, high mode and get as many shots as possible. Lastly, the biggest thing of all, make sure you don't flash the, uh, the whale sharks. And I don't mean, you know, showing them your, the nudie bits. I mean, making sure you don't use strobes because they are quite sensitive to light. Their eyes are very sensitive. Um, you don't want to blind them, that will just put them off and they'll end up diving and you won't see it for a while. So that's something to note. Same thing with turtles or any other um, subjects you might be photographing. Just make sure you know a little bit about the animals before you start taking strobes or you know, try to understand their behaviour a little bit. More often than not, especially with turtles, they'll, be, they'll welcome you in. But if they're trying to get away from you all the time and they're turning their back to you, they're probably not interested in having you around and might be a little bit frightened. So um, that's just something to note when you are taking wildlife photos. Uh, just know your subjects a little bit. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe if you're into these videos, leave a comment below, and if you've got any questions for future episodes, chuck them in and I'll address them uh, hopefully in, in a couple more once we get a, a few more questions. So I hope you enjoyed this. This has been another episode of Imagine, Capture, Inspire, and I'll chat to you on episode four. Just wait for that plane. Oh my god, how annoying. In the shots. Now, having a little zoom gear from Aquatech will just allow you to give that opportunity to zoom in. I don't know how many times my wife needs to text me to ruin the footage. So that's. We'll continue. Here we go.
<laughs> if you got an opportunity to look through the viewfinder, okay, that'll do.